Hi, this is Gail from Brittany of Naperville, and thanks for joining our Vintage Boardwalk Block of the Month. So this is a Camberbell design. We're making the quilt. There's uh, lots of applique things for you to do. There's lots of options for you for fabric in the kits that you purchase from Bernina of Naperville. And uh, we hope that these tutorials that we're embarking on for the next 13 months will uh, kind of get you a little bit more confident about doing applique in the hoop, working from these patterns, and just experimenting and, and having fun. There's a little bit of piecing in this. There's a lot of um, different embellishments and things like that to get to. And uh, this is our first lesson. So with our first lesson, we're gonna make swimwear. So we have four swimsuits, a pair of swim trunks, and uh, some life preservers that we're gonna make. And uh, they're all done fairly similarly. That's why I've grouped them together like this. And um, there's some things to remember. So I'm gonna go through what you get in your kit. Remember, your kit is gonna contain everything that you need as far as the pattern, the embellishments, the fabric, the batting, the backing, the borders, and the binding and all of those things. But you are gonna have to add some thread, stabilizers, uh, and that's about it thread and stabilizer. Um, I don't assign any specific colors with the thread that you're going to need because um, it's fairly simple. You just want to pick the thread color that matches the fabric that you're selecting. Um, we're going to, for this lesson, we're going to square up with just a regular ruler. But as we go through the different months, we're going to also offer some options for squaring things up with some of the Kimber Bell tools, some creative grid tools, and things like that so that you can explore maybe something that you already have in your quilting repertoire or maybe something new that you want to try. So let's get started. What is in the vintage boardwalk kit that you got? That's this little guy right here. So um, there's all the fabric. And I just want you to know you have so much fabric to choose from to make this that, you know, don't worry too much about, well, is this one supposed to go with here or is this one supposed to go over there? You're not going to have to worry about that. You also get your vintage boardwalk pattern and the pattern includes the CD that has all the designs and it is in multiple formats. I like to keep this little guy handy and I even you know might even Xerox it so you can make notes on it where you make fabric um, you put you know you want to plan out where you want to put your different fabrics and things like that. If you're a planner I kind of like when I did mine the first one, I just kind of did a step and I would be like, okay, looks like I need blue here, looks like I need white there, looks like I need a polka dot. That's kind of the thought process that I had with it. But that's, that's that. Now, some things that you're going to want to make sure that you set aside are definitely going to be the um, blue piece that you see here and then your backing and then your sashings. Those are gonna be the bigger cut portions in your kit. So make sure that you put those aside and that you don't cut into them. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hold on to your embellishment kit. I used this bag as I went through and needed some things. I'd pull out of there and then kept everything all neat and tidy in here. So these include all of the buttons that you need, all, all of the little vinyl pieces and little pull flowers and things like that. So that's what's in your kit. Now, what isn't in your kit? is stabilizer. So today for our first block, we're going to be making swimsuits and life preservers. I actually just used ultra clean and tear. So you're going to need some ultra clean and tear stabilizer and I do use two layers at a time. You're going to need a hoop that does at least about six by eight, five by seven ish. And so if you have a Bernina, that would be the large oval hoop. You're also gonna need your um, colors. So I'm working mostly with white, red, teal, and yellow today. So I pulled those colors of Isocord, but I also just kind of, you know, pull per the color. I think I'm actually gonna switch this color out for more of a navy color since I ended up pulling a lot of navies from my kit. But nonetheless, you're gonna need white, red, blue and yellow of some kind, or if that doesn't sing to you, you can pick another color. 
you're also gonna need bobbin thread. So here is our bobbin thread, and that's what we're gonna use through most of this process. This is the OESD bobbin fill in white. I don't really see any reason why you would need the black. And you're gonna need the stabilizer tape because a lot of times we end up cutting the pieces to a certain size that don't fit in the hoop. And so what they do is they get stitched down and then you use kind of like tape to hold those pieces into place so they don't wiggle all over the hoop. You're gonna see in just a minute. Since we have everything out that we need, it's time to get started. I'm gonna show you some little pieces that you might need along the way, but the best way to see what we need and to see what we need to do is just like get everything going in action here. Okay, so let's start with the swimsuit. So with the swimsuits, we have four of them and uh, I've paired up some of the fabric. So let me show you those and what we're doing. So this is gonna be one swimsuit. The blue will be the background and the strawberries will be the swimsuit. Then we've got a red background with a blue and red type swimsuit. Then we've got a yellow background with a solid blue swimsuit. And then we're gonna do a red background with this little daisy. So those are gonna be for our swimsuits. The next piece that we're gonna make are our life preservers. And there they are, right there. And with the life preservers, we need um, three different backgrounds, and then we need three different color stripes on the life preserver, and then one life preserver white piece. So I'm gonna be using this as my life preserver white piece. And then I'm gonna be using the red from my other piece as the red on the life preserver. And then the background of this one is gonna be our, our oars. So this is one life preserver. And then our other life preserver is gonna be blue with this orangey stripey fabric. And once again, we are gonna pair that with that white polka dot. Then finally, our last life preserver is gonna be this gray background with our little sunglasses. So that's gonna serve as our life preserver. So now all we need to do is get cutting and hooping up. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. You wanna make sure that you look at your information for your swimsuits here and there will be the cutting instructions there. So you're gonna cut just like they say from the book. Swimsuit one is, I pulled it out here. I'm gonna use this really cute yellow as my background. And this little gray with the dots is gonna be the strap. And this is gonna be the swimsuit body. So you can see that right there. So I cut everything. Then I also have other swimsuits. I've got my um, blue background with these strawberries here and then a dark blue background with the red here. So these two are swimsuit two. So both of these pieces, they're all cut identical. Then there is a swimsuit three, and that one had, they all have the same background size, but this one has a little bit larger of a swimsuit. So those are what I pre-cut, but for the video, I'm going to go over to my Bernina 880 Plus and show you how to do swimsuit one. It's fun, you'll love it, and let's get started. I've got my two layers of Ultra Clean and Tear, and that's going on my machine. I've already selected my swimsuit here on the machine, and now I'm ready to stitch. Now, for colors, yellow for this, so that's the yellow that I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna use like this little off-white for my white piece, and that is pretty much what I need for this. So I am threading up in the bobbin. I have the OESD embroidery bobbin thread. Okay, I have my white thread loaded up in my machine that matches my little piece here. 
And then I've got my background fabric that I'm gonna place in my hoop. Now I've lightly sprayed my stabilizer here with 505 spray, which is gonna kind of hold this piece into place. So I'm just taking this piece that I've cut per the instructions in the pattern, and I'm laying this down in here just like that. Now, on my Bernina, I have a feature, it's called basting, and I can either baste all the way around the design close or all the way around the perimeters of the hoop. So this is a feature that you're gonna use a lot in this entire quilt project. So let's look and see how we do the basting. So now we're going to be stitching the placement stitch for our halter top fabric. Now once that's stitched out, it's going to tell me where I need to place this piece of material. So I'm going to lay that down just like this, do my stitching, and then trim really close to that line. And before I get started, this is also where you might consider using a little bit of this expert tape or this stabilizer tape just so the piece doesn't move around on you. And this is just a little temporary tape. There we go. Right, once that's stitched out, you're gonna take a nice pair of sharp scissors. I like these Karen K. Buckley serrated curved scissors for this project. And I'm just gonna trim my threads. I can peel off my stabilizer tape. And notice that I've taken my hoop off the machine, but you're not gonna take the work out of the hoop. And now I'm just gonna trim really, really close to the stitching without trimming the stitching. All right, now there's another placement stitch and this time it looks like it's gonna be for the actual swimsuit part. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch that. So now I'm gonna lay down my swimsuit main material there and also adhere this with a little bit of my stabilizer tape. Make sure everything is flat. All right, and now I'm gonna stitch the tack down stitch.
And then once again, we're gonna remove our stabilizer tape. And then we're gonna trim this shape and sew the next color. Now I didn't take the hoop off for this. I mean, I could. Sometimes I like try to, I like to do things the totally hardest way possible. I'm sure some of you have had projects like that too. <laughs> I trimmed around our little bathing beauty and so now this next color I'm still gonna stitch out the white because it's gonna kind of do the little seam down here in the middle of the swimsuit So it's time for a color change because now it's going to do the sides and around here in a satin stitch that's going to cover these raw edges. And um, that, I don't want it to be white. I actually want it to be yellow color that I picked out. So we're going to do this one right here for the sides and under the bust. Through the magic of a video, we got everything all threaded. It was like instantly fast right <laughs> and I just want to make sure that you understand that when you're making these and you're picking the colors that you want for your swimsuit and your backgrounds and all of those things feel free to play around with the color um, any cot time there's a tack down stitch or something like that it's not really going to be visible so sometimes you can get away with using more neutral colors for that but I try to minimize the um, thread changes as much as possible just to you know I'm kind of I want to get these things going. I want to get them cranked out fast. Um, but uh, the thread colors are up to you and any shade and, and things like that. on to the other color I wanted to revisit some of my cutting here and trim it a little bit closer to the line just to make sure that I don't have any little hairy bits poking out from under my satin stitching Our swimsuit is done for now anyway you might notice that in the finished uh, picture of the swimsuits they have little ties either here at the neck or here at the neckline and that is something that's put on at the very last after everything is actually um, quilted and everything so you'll learn how to do those in the last class so we're gonna put this one aside and now you know what we did a swimsuit, now let's do some swim trunks. This time I've picked the swim trunks and I'm using this uh, faux ticking fabric as the background. And I've got this cute little plaid that's gonna actually be the swim trunks portion. So just like I did before, I select my design, then I'm gonna add a basting box that's gonna go just around my material so that I can hold my background fabric onto my pre-hoop two layers of ultra clean and tear. Now it's time to do the tack down or the placement stitch for the swim trunks. Okay, 
now it's time for the tack down stitch. So I'm just gonna cover that stitch that I just made with my fabric so I can get the super cute little short stitched out. And then I'm going to trim with my Karen K. Buckley scissors around and then finish all the color changes when the machine prompts me to do that. So pretty fast project. The only thing that's a little bit special about this is this gets a little embellishment at the end where we're going to use some cording to make a little drawstring for the shorts. But that, like I said, will come at the end. So I've chosen red for the belt of these little britches, but once again, you can choose whatever color you want. All right, let's talk about an oops. So in the middle of stitching this, I wasn't paying attention. I set up the camera, let everything go on auto autopilot, and one of my little guys flapped in front of here, got a wrinkle, and it just looked awful. So I could do one of two things, is I could just make a whole new pair of swim trunks, or I can fix this. So I just thought I would take this opportunity to show you how to fix or how I would attempt to fix this mistake. Now you might fix it a different way, but I am gonna just trim my background fabric really close to my embroidery stitching, but not trimming the embroidery stitching. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna go all the way up this line. Then I'm gonna take a piece of material from my ticking and I'm gonna cut it so my pattern matches up perfectly. Then I'm gonna trim a little piece of seam allowance here so I can add like a quarter of an inch seam to here and add a quarter of an inch seam on this side as well. So just trimming really close, about a quarter of an inch or whatever I deem to be the right distance there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that piece of background that I need. All right, so what I did is I cut a piece a little bit larger than I need, and then I lined this up so that it will look just like a continuous stripe. And I'm gonna stitch right down that pattern. And I've got matching thread in my machine. I can even kind of try to wiggle things and line that up. Back tack and cut. And there you see, that looks pretty good, especially after I press it. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So the idea is that I'm gonna come right down here, line this up like so, matching our little dotted lines together like this. and then sewing. And then I wanna make sure that I'm matching it all the way down. Back up. Lift and cut. And then that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna press it and everything. Then I'm gonna tuck I'll have to pick that out just a little bit, but I'm gonna tuck these back here like so, and then I'm just gonna do a little red satin stitch with some stabilizer under there, and no one will ever know. All right, so with a zigzag stitch set at 5.1 width and 0.30 length, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try.
lower my presser foot as soon as I get that thread off my finger. Okay, so I'm lining this up and stitching over just to hold everything down and wrap my edges. And blending it in. And now I'm gonna pivot a little bit and come back down the other side. And then I'm gonna go and do the other side. I think it's pretty good. All right, so I fixed them. There's a little seam back there, but at least I didn't have to re-embroider it. Now we all have our own little thresholds of what we're willing to live with, but after this is quilted and everything, I don't think it'll be that noticeable, but who knows, maybe I'll make another one. But hey, now you know how to try to fix a mistake. Otherwise, you know what, you might just, you know, start again. You have plenty of fabric. Okay, so we're getting ready to do this. I have picked my life preserver design and I also have selected the basting box. But now I need to make sure I understand that the red, I'm doing the one with the blue background and the, and the red on the life preserver. So red is gonna go in these corners here and white is gonna go at 12, three, six and nine o'clock. Starting off with my basting box. I'm gonna be careful not to let anything flop where it shouldn't be flopping this time around. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to put on the white piece. And there goes white. We're gonna put that right inside our bounding box there. And don't forget, if you need to, put some of your stabilizer tape down to hold it in place. Time to trim. Now it's time to do the placement stitch for our red fabric. All right, and then just a little PSA for you. Make sure to press your materials when you get them out of the box to prep because I've been kind of grabbing mine that have been folded for a little while and I've had, I don't know, I'm, I'm in a hurry, okay? So you're gonna take your time when you do this at home and make sure everything's pressed and flat. All right, enough of the PSA. Let's get going on stitching down this red material and then I'm gonna trim and then I'm gonna come back with our cover stitching. And I'm gonna do white cover stitching in this case because I think that's gonna look cute with the red fabric. All right, I'm gonna show you how to square up and I wanna talk a little bit about what we did. So um, you, why, some things that are important is each time you place fabric down, you want to remember to use the tape, that stabilizer tape. I forgot on my red and it puckered just a little bit. I mean, it's not enough for me to go like, this is ruined, but it's just something to be mindful of so it doesn't happen to you. So we um, wanna take our work out of the hoop once it's done. And these uh, life preservers need to be squared down to six and a half inches square. And I'm gonna start by just removing the basting stitches that we added from the back. And you can make a few cuts into the back with the seam ripper and then pull the loose threads from the top if you want, however you wanna get that stuff out of there. 
Then once that's done, we want to tear our stabilizer away. And I just kind of tear into the life preserver like this. Okay, get that big blob away. Now we want to take out the insides and our little pieces here. and it comes out fairly easily. Okay, so now there's that. So now that that's done, I could give this a, another little pressing and then I'm gonna square it up. Okay, so these need to be six and a half inches and half of six and a half inches is three and a quarter. So what I'm doing is I'm aiming my three and a quarter mark on my ruler right down the middle of my life preserver. Now, they, the Kimberbell, which is who the company that designed this particular pattern, has rulers that can assist you in this, but I actually, I get more confused trying to use those. No, no um, offense to them or anything, but I thought in this uh, class, because everything is fairly simple with these first few blocks, that I would just show you the old fashioned way that I've been doing it for a while. So I have it on the three and a quarter inch here. So that's gonna give me six and a half inches. And you can see that the original background block is definitely big enough to get it off center here. So, you know, be mindful of that. And now I'm just gonna trim off my pieces. Okay, so now that I can just turn around and now make sure that I cut six and a half inch square. And I'm just double checking that everything is straight because I had to kind of even it up to make it even with my oars here. All right. So there's my block. It's squared up and now that was a life preserver. Now let's go ahead and square up our swimsuit. All right, so the swimsuit needs to be squared up to four and a half by eight and a half. And here's my center of my swimsuit right there. So now half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So I'm measuring four and a quarter right along that line right there. And now I'm just going to go ahead on this end and measure eight and a half. Now I have the sides to do. So this little line right here is right at the center of my swimsuit. And since this has to be four and a half wide, two and a quarter is where I'm lining up my piece right along that little zigzaggy stitch. and then two and a quarter along this side here, which will give me four and a half. So there, it's four and a half by eight and a half, and then our little life preserver. So here are just some samples of the block that we're gonna do. So we have swimwear and our life preserver. Woo! All right, so what did you think? Did you learn a little something? Are you gonna give this a try? Are you gonna not be afraid when you make a mistake because sometimes little accidents happen, right? Um, I mean, I'm holding this up. You can't even tell there's a problem. I can't tell there's a problem. Shh, no one will ever know. All right, and then there's our little life preserver. I love this. I love the colors. I love the little oars in the background. I'm not sure you really row, row, row your boat on a boardwalk. I'm not even sure I've been to a boardwalk, come to think of it. But, And then, of course, we've got our swimsuit. Now, this swimsuit, it, this will go perfect in my little bedroom because I have a, a gray and yellow bedroom, and I just love it. I actually think that my mom had a swimsuit like this back in the day. But anyway... Don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's pretty easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. So the next time we meet, we're going to be doing 
cotton candy, palm trees, and seagulls. And you know what they all have in common? Fluffy three-dimensional embroidery. <laughs> all right, enough talking. Get to work on your vintage boardwalk and I'll see you next time.